Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Cornish, of Statewide News Service, jbstechvilly.com. And as you can see, he's now the columnist for the Jewish press. Yes, Rabbi, I have a column called Albany Beat, and I write about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. And uh, it's a lot, it's very rewarding to do something like that in such a prestigious national publication as the Jewish press. And with us today, we All have, right. for the first time, Anthony Capis, uh, or I say Capiche. You can do but, either one. That works. It works either way. <laughs> Capiche, you Capiche. know, that means understand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, you're the executive director of the Central Avenue Bid mm -hmm. Business Improvement District, but I didn't know that your formal name is the Central District Management Association. Right. That's our incorporation. That's right. your incorporated right. name. Right. So, but the colloquial name that we all know you by is the Central Avenue Business Improvement That's District. right, that's right. So, What's your boundaries on Central? I mean, Central Avenue goes all the way into Schenectady. And right, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're a city um, boundary. So we run from Lark Street to the city line of Albany, which along Central Avenue is three miles. What does that like up to the Sears building? Uh, the best way to sort of describe it would be the overpass, overpass. of the highways mm -hmm. um, and the right. rail bridge. So by Vetrano Road. Road. Vetrano Road is actually part of our association boundaries. And then we have some side streets, North Allen Street, Russell Road, parts of Washington. Um, as far as we know, it may be the largest physical business improvement district in the country um, with 10 really? miles of sidewalk uh, that's sort of contained within our boundaries, not by budget. I mean, you got Times Square and, and right. 34th Street Partnership that blow our doors off as far as... But explain you know. how the business improvement district survives or how you get your money. Right. Um, business improvement district started back in the late 60s, early 70s, and they were um, sort of... a. a Businesses got together and said they want to do something on their own above and beyond what city government could deliver to them. So what they basically do is uh, local laws established that uh, allows business property owners that are contiguous in the state of New York to self-assess themselves a fee above their current property tax, school tax, it's above all that. The difference with it is why we, we tend not to call it a tax is because it's a self-imposed thing, unlike a fire district or water district. Right, so why did you need a law? What's that? Why do you need a law? Well, it makes everything be a part of it. You can't sort of opt out of it. Because what happened in some other communities in the early stages of it, this property owner was in, this property wasn't, yeah. and you couldn't get a contiguous uh, stream. So it's like a them. homeowners association. Yes, it is. In that sense. Yes, and the property but owners you don't themselves. Need, but you don't need, I don't know if you, did you need state legislation to create a homeowners association? Um, to have a, a special assessment that's collected by a municipality. and then Not a municipality, yeah. it's yeah. collected by the group, like the Central District Management Association. It, it's collected by the municipality, and that's the way it's done across all the 50 states. Oh, that that's them. why you need the law. That's right. It's, okay. It has to be approved by the local legislature under the state law. So now the state law says you can create them, the local municipality says you can have them, and uh, I think in the current situation, there's over 1,500 of them in the, in the United States right now, and so, close to 150 in New York. So who keeps track of the money? And why doesn't it just go directly to you? Why do you need to have a pass-through to the government? Um, well, to answer your question, who keeps track of it is I, I report to a board of directors that are the property owners. So I don't work for the government. Right, I work exactly. for the property owners right. themselves. So they are the control board of, of their own funds. You know, and, and it's actually a very interesting process that they dictate how the money is to be spent, what levels of staffing. Oh, those. Okay, but the money goes to, what, the city treasurer? It's collected by the city treasurer's office, correct. And then the city treasurer cuts you a check for the amount that they collect. That's correct, in, in a roundabout way. Why yeah. does that have to, I mean, that, that just means more government interference. Well, because it's collected in the same means and, and ways as a property tax would be, that's why it's done that way. So there's that mechanism of control, and also there's the, the mechanism of managing it with the property. It's associated to the valuation of the property. There's calculations that are involved. In, in our municipality, it's pretty simple, but when you get into New York City and other places, when they have these larger business improvement districts, it's very complicated. It's, it's uh, valuations of, of buildings and their heights and yeah. their widths and all that. We, we don't tend to do that in upstate. It's, so this is the most efficient uh, and easiest way. And in, in, say, for example, in Pennsylvania, um, the business improvement districts themselves actually um, send out the bills. Right. Um, and they so have the same powers. I guess New York State, when they, when they enabled the legislation, they didn't want to turn over that sort of 
uh, taxing yes. jurisdiction powers to an authority. It's the same way a fire district or a water district in New York State is set up. They, they want them to go through the municipality. And in this case, it's a good thing if you think about it because it does fall under the tax cap regulation. So, it, you know, and the bonding regulations and all those things. So there are controls in place given that it's under that structure that keeps it from, in some areas, could get out of control. And we, we don't want that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just find it a, a government interference. I just think that if you're going to set up an association, you're going to incorporate, then mm -hmm. you should be responsible for the uh, for the administrative mm -hmm. responsibility of making sure that each business gets of the bill, the invoice, you are responsible for collecting it, mm -hmm. you are responsible for dealing with it, and not the city shouldn't be the collector, you know, play the role of collector for a private entity, mm -hmm. which essentially you are. Yeah. It, the, the makes no sense to me. Makes no sense? Well, yeah. unfortunately, I can't say that I wrote the law or put the law into place, but I was hired by the property owners to enact it and manage it on their behalf. So that's my role, and I, and I try to manage it within the boundaries so of the law. So what's your budget possible. that you're managing? Right now, uh, this year will probably be about $580,000 for my district. 580,000, you have how many businesses in your district? Uh, 511 as of last week. 511, yeah. and you have 580,000, so it's about $1,000 Well, each? it's going to be weighted because you have to imagine no. there are big box stores like Home Depot and some of our larger supermarkets and things like that that are much bigger footprints that, that carry a, a bigger... So what's the smallest to the largest that you get? Uh, the smallest, I think, is about $375, and then it probably goes... Yeah, and then it goes all the way up to probably $26,000, something like that. For a Home Depot type? Yeah, big, a big piece yeah. of but property. You know, Anthony, and some of them are divided into smaller parcels, so it's hard to sort of... Do you find that's why people don't want to set up business on Central Avenue? Because no. they have this extra... No, as a matter of fact, since the bid has been in existence, we've seen an increase of over 600,000 square feet of retail space. Um, the property values, in bucking the trends in the rest of the city, uh, when we were founded in 1998, the valuation of the city the properties within the boundaries was $160 million. The valuation now is over $248 million in that same time frame, which kind of bucks the trends even in the other areas uh, of the city. So we're, we're pretty happy with the results. When we started, there were 100 vacant storefronts on Central Avenue it was in the newspaper, and um, now we run probably below 17 or 18. Yes, on I was going to ask you, really? Anthony, yeah. on the practical mm -hmm. level, what do you do for the, I mean, let's say that's what I was going to thinking that if there's a vacant store, mm -hmm. do you go around looking around? Uh, for some tenant somewhere, yep. someone to fill the gap, that would be one of your services? Yes. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, you know, here's a great example. Um, uh, Valentine's Nightclub was down where uh, Albany Med was expanding their boundaries, yeah. and the owner of that you know, was looking for space. We, we had him on the show, Howard Glassman. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great guy. He's one of our, our greatest members, I mean, actually. He was on the show because he's Jew, a Jewish business owner. Absolutely. So he's yeah. a wonderful guy, he and, and he was looking for a space. We caught wind of it. We knew of a space that was available. We got involved. We, we helped them out as best we could with, uh, you know, working with the, the title company that had the property. There were, you know, challenges and issues with uh, him getting in there. We certainly worked with him in the city. And, and, and so we, we actively pursue, and that's a big part of what my board wants to make sure that the value of the properties is constantly going up and increasing by maintaining a good, solid vacancy rate. I mean, maintaining what it What about maybe crime? I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. any, you know, anything about any of the rates, mm -hmm. but, you know, the lower Central Avenue around mm -hmm. Lark Street looks mm -hmm. a little bit sleazy, and, you know, and then you go out higher and higher. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very nice neighborhoods, I know, in South Allen, and, sure. you know, that people sit outside, and then you mm -hmm. get the malls. You know, it's almost higher class in a way. It's it's a really funny thing that you say that, and right. and, it, and it's well, one I'm of the bigger you're challenges. Over well, here I laugh I, I laugh at the at perception me. because if I was to ask you a sort of a Central Avenue trivia question, yeah. the answer would probably come up as you say. But the number of actually reported crimes that take place on Central Avenue, a majority of them take place at the west end of Central Avenue because really? of shoplifting and, and things like crimes like that, and also a number of reported incidents of EMS calls and things like that where the higher volume of people take place. So, you know, there's a lot more issues with people, um, say, st stealing, you know, um, formula and, and mm -hmm. cigarettes and, and where the, that was a bigger thing before. But so we actually have meetings with the loss prevention people on a fairly regular basis at the big box stores to, to coordinate coordinate information. On Lower Central Avenue, we, we deal with issues of, of what I call street-level crime, and we have a really great relationship with the police department. Uh, 
the, the outgoing chief that left and the new chief are fantastic to work with. Um, we have the beat officers that we're very engaged with. We meet with them almost daily, uh, sometimes two or three times a day. And when things come up, when there are issues, um, we try to react as best we can. And I, and I know this sounds silly, but when, early in, in lower towns and park area, we dealt with things like public urination and, and vagrancy and well, panhandling. Silly about that. Well, no, but they're, yeah. they're issues that, yeah. that, that you don't really think well, about. And there's flying. a science to dealing with them, and, and it's called crime prevention through environmental design. And we started looking at what was allowing those incidents to occur. Um, and, and I don't think we would have seen the new developments that's taken place on Lower Central Avenue, new housing projects that have gone in, market rate housings on the corner of Lark and Henry Johnson Boulevard and Central, right there, 14 new units at market rate, uh, four new restaurants along the Washington Avenue side of Central Avenue. And those things wouldn't have happened, I would say, 17 years ago when we really had a problem down there with it. But it had, it's still an issue, and we still have a perception now you problem. mentioned 17 years ago because mm -hmm. you started 17 I years did. ago. I did, I did. So this is, you know. So it's been a passion for a long time. I know that they talk about it just even a broken window. Yes. I mean, it may be so, a very small thing. You say, what does it cost to fix? But it's the perception is incredible. That's correct. That's why I read about that once. I mean, we're more like New York City. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to just build up the neighborhood, but someone sees a broken window, so you like that is a slum area where you know just a small thing like that something get painted. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is a nice looking. That's a that's story. an actual theory of economic development, the broken window theory. That if you leave one broken window, there's bound to be a second one because somebody thinks no one cares. Which is why our board spends a lot of time and pushes a lot of our energies into the maintenance operation. I mean, half of our budget goes to maintenance and operation, which uh, is incredible. What do you do? You of the district. So what do you do? What does that exactly mean? Seven you don't days paint a week. To paint the stores for. We don't paint the storefronts, but for example, well, we do work with property owners when they have issues. We've we've actually gone in and helped uh, property owners install ca install cameras where they have issues. If we know if there's an issue of public urination in a bus stop, we'll work with CDTA or the nearby property owners. But we do. We clean the district seven days a week. We have litter vacuums that pick up trash, pick up hundreds and hundreds of bags of trash every month. Why um, isn't that the city job? Well, it is the city job, and they do provide pickup for trash and things like that. But you've got to understand, it's our property owners want it to be as best as they can be. So and they'll come once or twice a week, and you want it to be every the, day. The city has to spread their resources across an entire I city see. the size right. of Albany. Our property owners, the downtown bid property owners, the Lark Street property owners say, that's not good enough for us. We want something better than that. So seven days a week, eight hours a day, that's a lot of cleaning. So yeah. why don't you promote that part of it like they do in Times Square? where they put their names around the baskets, mm -hmm. the waste paper baskets that are on the corners that are strapped to the light poles. Right. Like the, uh, when, when you have someone uh, sweeping up, they have mm -hmm. the signage of mm -hmm. the New York City Partnership or the Times Square Partnership, you know, the, where the, to know that that's who's doing it. And Our guys are branded. Our guys have their jackets and the shirts and all that. The garbage cans belong to the city. Um, and actually, the ones that are on Central Avenue right now were purchased under the Keep I was America. Giving Beautiful. it as an example. Yeah, absolutely. You know. We we do brand our equipment. As a matter of fact, if anybody's seen our flower truck, a lot of people actually kind of poke fun at it. It's uh, it's emblazoned with our flower program, and it's a Central Avenue Bid Clean team on it, and all that sort oh, of stuff. So okay. we we put a lot of energy into that, and it and it is a big challenge, you know, to to keep all that. All right, up so the code. I got to tell you, you mentioned that the the four new restaurants on Washington Avenue, how I came to meet you was the, at right. the ribbon cutting of Terra, the new kosher restaurant sure. that's there. Chris Higgins, who you know is uh, represents Lock Street area and used to represent that Washington Avenue corridor, uh, he uh, was on the program and he said that that, air, that block is in no man's land between the Lock Street bid and the Central Avenue bid. Mm -hmm. So have you adopted that? Street uh, by Townsend Park, Washington Avenue. No, that's Townsend always Park. been a part of our association. That um, always has been. Mm -hmm. Well, you should get to Chris Higgins and let him know. Let him talk to him about because that. Because he yeah. he literally, Rabbi Alte was here too. Sure. He right. said it was no man's land. Well, yeah, we're so. on videotape. That's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they will tune in. It, you know, so catch it on the internet. So yeah. I want you to know. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. That you really should reach out to the elected officials and let them know what your encatchment area sure, is. Sure, sure. Um, and does, uh, just another thing about yeah. the garbage, but I know from more New York, and <laughs> I live here, but you know that I know that they have their own safety. Yes. I mean, security, maybe, maybe it's in the Diamond District. All right, maybe they need mm -hmm. a little more security. But do you uh, provide that? And I know, like, I mean, a mall put in their own security. Right. You know, obviously the police will come if there's any crime, but mm -hmm. they put in their own people. 
Is that part of your we, services? We, uh, when we originally started, there was some of that that went on, and then we particularly focused on areas of need. Um, what we found is since the police department has gone to the neighborhood engagement unit, the NEU, and the team approach to policing, our our resources are better spent working with them, and we do. We have, like I said, we even meet with loss prevention people, um, bring them in. We, we work with the bike patrol. We just had a fundraiser and, and raised uh, over $5,000 to help buy bikes that will be used to patrol in our area. Um, and buy bikes for whom? For the police department to patrol in our area. They to, don't have enough money to buy bikes? Well, they stuff? do, but again, the, you know, our property owners want to support the things that support them and, and help their businesses grow. Well, so couldn't you use $5,000 for something else within that would be just for the property owners? Well, going back to your point, security is a big thing and it's very important to them and then they want to see those Because they need officers. these souped up bicycles. They, I mean, I see them with the, sure. they have flashing lights on them. They, I mean, I want a bicycle like that too. I mean, it's yeah. like, well, but I mean, they got extra uh, uh, shock absorbers, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and they, this yeah. really is, you know, you just put a little motor on it and you're, and you're going, but <laughs> well, we want them to not go that fast. But yeah. they're really, I mean, they're they're you know, you, you look at this bicycle and it's not a Schwinn or, or no, you know, <laughs> no, no, and, and they and they are they're built for the abuse that they will take in in the daily grind of up and down curbs and sidewalks and and mastering you know the the streets if you will, and that's that's exactly you know the great thing about what I do is I'm very confident that I'm responding to the property owners and what they want to have done. If, if I was working for the government, it would probably be different. I'd have to have all these different ways about doing things. But because I have a board of property owners who say, this is an issue for me. We want you to deal with this. We want you to deal with that. Right. If there's a crime problem in an area, we can zoom, you know, sort of zone in and focus on it and deal with it. And in, in a lot of cases, we're able to solve it with the help of the police department without having to bring our own team in and hire more people to patrol because they do a good job. I mean, they really are able, they provide us amazing crime statistic analysis. So when we think of an area that's high crime or a problem, when we zone in on it and say, you know what we're seeing here is this problem area is more about uh, marijuana or this or it's domestic violence calls. We know that th even if the calls were all domestic violence or EMS calls, how are we going to respond to that? That's better served well, for the police how department. Do you, you know, it's all, you're, you're a good marketing person. You're a good PR person also. You have background in that. Yeah. Uh, how do you change that image of the culture? Because a lot of people in the Jewish community, when they want to go to terror, that terrorized <laughs> about yeah, having to that's park. That's a bad irony in there. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> they, to go down there and to park and to, they don't, just the image that's in their mind even before well, they kind of what go I down said, there. You know, it's sleazy. That's, you know, that's, the, and you they, know, a lot of people yeah. do have their kind of. And they're of, not going um, because Well, they, I would imagine those same people go in a colony center um, and they shop at the malls and they have the same kind of crimes and issues that but happen they don't there. But it's the they don't think that way. And I agree, right. it's a perception. I mean, maybe that'll change as of recently with Colony well, Center. But, but you know, it, I, it, I, I, I had parked. Uh, to go to Terra, I parked on the Central Avenue side of crossed uh, over the park yeah. and crossed over Townsend Park. And across the across the way was uh, an ambulance and a cop, and they were bringing so someone was passed out on the sidewalk, and they were bringing him into the ambulance, and you know they had EMS there. And, sure. I mean. Yeah, I looked at that and I'm like, yeah, I can understand why, you know, little old ladies wouldn't want to come down here at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, you know. Well, yeah, and I, and I understand that. And believe me, that's a challenge that we deal with all the time. But we, we've actually had focus groups. And this is, a, this is really interesting to hear this. We focus group people and we ask them, do you shop on Central Avenue? Do you go to Central Avenue? And a lot of times the responses are no. Mm -hmm. And we say, why not? Well, it's not safe. It's not clean. People don't go there. Okay, well, we have 510 businesses that are doing well there. So something's wrong with the information we're getting. So then the next question we ask is, what's your favorite Chinese restaurant? Oh, I love Ichiban's. Or, you know, Vans is a great place to go to, you know, when I want this. Or, you know, there's a Vietnamese place that's up the block. Or, or Terra. Oh, oh, you know, they have really good food there. That's really good. Or Umana Grill right and next door. And then all of a sudden, wow, Central Avenue. Something's wrong. Yeah. Where did you buy your car? I bought it on Central Avenue. Where did wow. you go for this? You know, we have all these different ethnic markets. We have 80 places to eat. Okay, between the restaurants, the supermarkets, and the, and the ethnic markets that are on the street. Somebody's going to these stores. So we hear the stories of people don't want to go there. They but it's don't the come walk here. in traffic. Yeah, well, it, but, you know, a place like Vans or, right. or wherever. The you Vietnamese know, place. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're coming from all over the capital region. And we have specific ethnic markets that draw a crowd from all over the region. And, and we know that it's working because they're there. And, again, if you go to any of those restaurants, well, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night, 
they're, they're cranking it. And, and the guys you know, like um, the Lopey, you know, he's really got it going. He's got poetry reading, events, the Linda Norris Auditorium's got shows going on Linda, all the time. Yeah, I know. You can, yeah. you know, once you go beyond Lake, Mm -hmm. And further west, you, you know, it's much better, even though quail is, you know, uh, quail in central. There. But still, you know, my, my idea here is not to put down central. No, Avenue. I understand. The that. idea is to build up central. Avenue 100%. And to try to, you know, because I know you're working on things and yeah. to try to get you to explain about all the things the that strategy. you're working on yeah. and the strategy. So it might sound like I'm questioning you. No, and, no, and, and that's okay. That's know, why we're but here. I, but I don't want you to. Uh, no. But, you know, like Mark and you know. telling that I once, this wasn't even in this city, but it was a Jewish developer. So, you know, I was talking to him. He says, oh, Man, I says, how's all the stores? Because he had a strip mall. He says, I got to blow the nose for some of these guys. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he's just rent. He's the landlord. All right, here, going. Where was this? It was just a different city altogether. Oh, it wasn't even oh, in the Albany okay. area. And he just saying that he put his nose into it, saying, hey, you get out of the market. Why don't you put your sign that way? You know, mm -hmm. it really wasn't my business. You know, I'm a right. landlord, but I know business. So I helped. So I was wondering, that's what the dovetails into it. I mean, would you say uh, you have a restaurant and saying, well, maybe your sign should be a little bit bigger. Oh, would yeah. you say, so, you know, you get that involved with a business or, yes. you know, I don't you even do? know what they call oh, yeah. it. They put those kind of signs. So I don't know there, what you call those. So the A-frames? Uh, A-frames. Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you put an A-frame in front and, you know, people are walking by, they don't know. Oh, like a sandwich board? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. an A-frame yeah. they call it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're helping them with the marketing also, mm -hmm. the positive idea. As, as many things as we can do, and again, you know, you're, you try to spread yourself as thin as you can with all those businesses and and there's different levels of interest the the small startups you know where they need the most help and and that's in that area that we're talking about just now there's four new restaurants that have opened there in the last year okay so we want to make sure that those are anchored and successful so again we tackle it with working with whatever they need as far as helping to get sign permits whatever even to the details of getting a ribbon cutting um, but working with the police department to make sure if there's issues or complaints that there's response um, working with the city to make sure that the trees are trimmed making sure the lights stay on and the sidewalks no, so open. it's so tough the restaurant it's business is so tough it's a hard business and, right and now. I'll tell you Central Avenue really lost a lot when Spectres moved out and when you know there were other stores that you know just vacated along the uh, but Rosen's uh, uniforms, I mean, they don't rely on just walking traffic. No, they rely most on retailers. the police and, yeah. you know, so they have their, Evolved. their niche yeah. and, you know, they don't have to rely on just, you know, the average uh, mm -hmm. person on the street. So, you know, for these other restaurants, I know there's a lot of bars that have closed up and, com you know, come and go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, is that... Are you trying to discourage bars along Central Avenue? No, no. In fact, we, like I said, we worked with the low beat to get opened up on Central Avenue. It was but important. Paulie's to change over to more of a jazz yeah. entertainment venue. You know, at but Delinda. I'm talking about you know around you know the uh, around Henry Johnson and what at Robin Street. Well, yeah, and, 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 and there, there and there's a, a large number of of clubs that yeah. actually do very well. Occasionally, we get issues with noise from the neighborhood, and we try to help with the police department to deal with that, but there's uh, four or five, maybe six thriving clubs down there that are that are doing well. The good news is, for the most part, they don't interfere too much with the neighborhood, so there's a nice balance, um, and certainly they're they're in live with, you know, entertainment and venues, and, and so there are niches along Central Avenue, music, entertainment, nightlife, mm -hmm. and, and again, like I said, with 80 places to find a place to eat yeah. and dine, and, and that's interesting because we were at 40 back in 1998, and okay. now that we're at 80, and you have to include what's going on with that transition, that the, the, the change of the, the culture of who it is. You know, we have a, a halal market. We have, right. you know, a Mexican market. We have Chinese markets. We, you know, so it, it's... it's a kosher restaurant? Yes. Right. yes. I mean, yeah. you know, so, so, I mean, it's really wonderful yeah. to see all this happening. So you're saying there's only 17 vacant storefronts on Central Avenue in 2015? Fluctuating, yeah, about there. You know, uh, 17. like, That's like we just had one that just opened up. Yeah, I mean, storefronts themselves. Yeah. In that... In, in, is it mainly the lower part? It's Central? pretty much. It would pretty much be east of North Allen Street. So, is where okay. We have so, so in the, f I, I really wanted to get onto a bunch of other things. Sure, but go I ahead. I want to ask you because I worked on the corner of Lock and Washington, and when it was Branch Drugs. Okay. And before your time, and uh, I want it was 1979, 80, 81 in that range. Sure. You know? But I wanted to um, ask you, what are you doing with that corner? I mean, of. 
of Locke and Washington. Because it was Subway or something? Oh, where that one went out. It used to be yep. a whole bunch of different small you know, restaurants. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, a cadre of different places to eat. What, what are you doing with that? Well, with the help of the city, actually, there's um, a committee that's been formed because there's been a couple of vacancies that have popped up on, on Lark Street and, and that corner. Um, there's a couple of things that are happening. There's yeah, the conversation. Key, the key bank's going out. Yeah, it's gone, gone I believe, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's actually a trend that we have to sort of watch for banks coming out because really the, the, the need for location-based banks is becoming less and less. Well, you're happy that's just over your border. You well, don't, you know. it's, we, can't, we can't think border like that because, you know, a, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if there's a vacancy there, we're concerned about it okay. as well. So, you know, we're, we're actually part of a group that's working with the city from the mayor's direction to... Uh, to work with Lark Street to take a look at a strategic plan for that area right well, there. Well, for those two corners, yeah, you've yeah. got two major you know, yeah. corners there that are just with vacant storefronts. You, you know what one of the things that I've learned, I've been doing this now for 20 years, not here, but I mean, I also did it in Canada, in New York too, yes. is in, in the section that we're talking about, there's a lot of small property owners. And, and I don't say that by stature, I just mean right. they're small properties. They're certain square footage, they meet certain criteria, and only certain businesses are going to go in there. Um, and, and I can't dictate what an entrepreneur wants to do with a right. space when they sign a lease, but right. I can certainly help them be more successful. And we have all our partners that come in. But if a property owner um, is either overvaluating their rents and they can't rent a space um, and it's not at the market, you know, and they don't reach out for information or whatever, we, we, we've helped people with that, help them find the right niche and help find the right market. Um, but also sometimes they're in a situation where they they have to charge a higher rent. And, and if the space only calls for a certain type of business, like a subway or something like that, and the rent is here, but the, but the income level is here, that same store, maybe a block up, might have done some completely different amount of business. So we have to try to analyze what the, what the foot traffic is. And there should be no excuse, really, when you think about it, unless we understand it, because hundreds of people every week are at the bus stop across the street, right. and they would eat at Subway. So what were the marking factors that really put them under? That, that put them under? Why and that's, was it? Well, again, I, I, I wasn't okay. able to share with that property owner before they pulled out what exactly went wrong. So. What do you think went wrong? Um, I think it was probably a combination of things. It was probably the, the size of the space and the amount of revenue you can generate per square foot with a sandwich shop. I mean, it's a big store, um, the one where Subway is. Well, the, but the, they also had Chinese food they offered. They yeah. offered other types of cuisines. And again, it's tricky because here you go. You've got a block that's got a lot of restaurants on it that are doing okay. But they were there first. They were there first, but maybe there's not a niche for, and I don't want to accuse the property owner of not doing the right thing or the business owner for not doing the right thing, but maybe there isn't a niche for Subway Chinese and you when know. When my in that market. friends went to that place, they said the food was terrible. Again, I'm not saying you're saying. It. I didn't I'm say just, that. I know, but that's really what I mean. Yeah. Su Subway has a a certain cookie cutter approach of and quality stands, but that Chinese part of it. Yeah. was just, I mean, people just ran away. Well, so. and that's what I get. You know, I can't tell an entrepreneur how to run a business. That's true. Okay, they are, there's a reason they're an entrepreneur. If they right. weren't an entrepreneur, they'd probably be working right. for IBM with a group of 20 other people, but they're independent thinkers. They want to do what they want so, to do, and they know better. Okay, so I wanted to tell, <laughs> I, I, no, you mentioned about Canandaigua, one yes. of my favorite cities. In, beautiful in this place. Is, beautiful place. It's the Finger Lakes. It's, they have uh, culinary, uh, the, the wine and... Yeah, the museum, the, uh, the, 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 the market there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I mean, it's just a, a wonderful place to all sorts of wines and, and it's uh, Vintner's uh, dream yes. area. So uh, why do you want to leave there? I mean, that's like, wow. Well, they didn't throw me out, so that's <laughs> the good news, okay? Um, why did I want to leave there? I, you know, yeah, for I, this. Well, I, you know, re, the reality of it is I had family from Westchester. That's where I'm from originally. I'm from White Plains, New York. That's where I grew up. My, my in-laws are in Buffalo. Yeah. Okay. So I was in Canada. My wife had an opportunity for a job as well. Yeah. Um, it, it moved us sort of in the middle almost uh, between them. And it allowed us to see my family and her family in a more balanced way. I'm only an hour away in Canandaigua. And plus, this job opportunity came up. And it was a great interview process for me when they said that we're looking for somebody. And I walked in. They'd interviewed about 10 people for the job. And when I walked in the room, they said, do you know what a business improvement district is? And I said, yes, I do. They go, OK, sit down. Because the people they had interviewed before me really just had no clue. So I had a really good shot at the job. I knew that walking in. And when the opportunity came up, the, the pay was right, and, and the opportunity presented itself as a, a terrific challenge. And again, like I said, 100 vacant stores, really a disinvestment that was going on, and an opportunity to kind of sink my teeth into it and try to do something bigger. Okay. Because Candigua was actually beautiful and fun to work in. Right. I miss it. 
So let me ask you approximately, what's the range of your salary? The range of my salary, well, it's well below 100,000 right. and above 50. <laughs> okay, so you're up there in the 70s. After 17 years, I think that's okay. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Well, um, it's supposed to be 1,000 for every year of your age. So <laughs> I better catch up. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't want to be 29 anymore <laughs> over here. What is Catalyst? In Catalyst, well, in your building, or it says, it said on your website something about Catalyst, uh, that you were a developer of Catalyst, C-A-T-Y-L-I-S-T? Um, it says that on our website, yeah. that we're a developer of Catalyst? Yeah. Well, I apologize for not knowing what that is, okay. but I'd have to d figure no out problem. where that's posted and well, see what it means. What about Capital Car Share? Capital Car Share, I'm, I'm, I'm a board member of Capital right. Car Share, I'm the treasurer of Capital Car Share. Um, they are a new startup. They're about a year old They're this in the month. same building as you. They're, yeah, using space in our building right. to get started. They're about to move to Lark Street. They've expanded. They're growing. They're adding Is more cars. Is it an Uber type thing? Or? It's, it's different than Uber in the sense that you share a car with other people. You pay a monthly membership fee. Uh, and you get to borrow the car, you can sign in with your phone and you pay an hourly rate to borrow the car. Um, it pays for the gas and the insurance, so you become a shareholder of the vehicle. It's a great thing in an urban environment where we're trying to encourage people to balance live work and parking, you know, so you don't have to grab your car or a car, you can borrow a car. So how many cars does car share? Right now there's six. Uh, oh, wow. They hope to be eight soon. Um, and expanding this time, they're talking more about maybe something more utility-oriented, like a pickup truck or a minivan, as the clients that use it. It's about 100 people have signed up in the year to share their cars, and uh, uh, they're talking for more things that they can use to go shopping and, and pick who, something. And who runs it? Is it Kateri? Kateri is the operations person. So Nina Ferguson it? is the, the marketing and communications person. Right, so right? who runs it? Um, those two, that's the employees right now. That's, yeah. that's the team. So there's this, no president? or The president is Carrie Ward, who works with the uh, regional uh, planning group. And well, she's with CDTC. That's right. So right. She's, not, she's the president of the board. Board. We're not employees, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that's a startup. We, we, okay. we think it's very important to our there's neighborhood. There's no CEO of the company? There's no CEO. Okay. It's not that big. No, but when yeah. you incorporate, they ask you who the president of the comp corporation is. Yeah. They ask you the vice president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no CEO. I'm but, the treasurer, carries the president, and yeah. we have two staff members. That's it. Okay. We're on a shoestring. And you're not being paid by them. I am not being paid okay. by them. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you see as the future for, uh, in the last few minutes we have, mm -hmm. what do you see as the future for, the cent for Central Avenue, especially Lower Central, be mm -hmm. from between Robin and Lark? Between Robin and Lark, I still think that we're, we're looking at small local businesses, those niche markets, those, those um, people who don't compete with Walmart and big box stores to bring products to people in the neighborhood where they are. Um, I, I, I do believe there's still a market for food on the street um, and, and creative things like food. Um, but I think you're starting to see more and more people develop unique products that are starting to become the mainstay for people. Um, they're, they're, we're seeing trends away from uh, typical, I mean, even to talk about something like the Dollar Shave Club. I know that seems ridiculous, but you know there, there are markets that are dominated by big companies, and I think the market is starting to break open a little bit. People are saying, I can get things that are local, unique, different. I mean, who can up open a kosher vegetarian restaurant? And with Indian cuisine. Indian it, with, yeah, I mean, with all these different things, and then a mnemonic African grill, and, and all these unique things. And people are starting to branch out. There's nothing wrong with the Olive Garden. There's nothing wrong with, well, you know. too salty, the Olive Garden. We might be too salty for some people, but wouldn't it be nice to have 20 different places to pick from as opposed to five national chains? And that's what we're after on Central Avenue, and, and that, specifically that part. The other parts, there's big opportunities yes. that we're working on. And now. that's what I understand. Yeah. So Which will benefit those folks on Lower Central Avenue. I think, well. Mark, we're out of time. But, Anthony, it was very, very informative. Yes. And we wish you a lot of success because your success means a lot of success for a lot, a lot of people, a lot of that's businesses, true. even the quality of life for everybody in the, really, the city of Albany, anybody who shops in Albany. So continued success Thank and you. do it with good health. Thank All you. Right. Much success. Thank you.